Welcome to Love, Laughter, and Limits. I'm Tom Dozier, and this lesson is the launch, the transition from dependent child to independent adult. This class is the introduction to the series of lessons on parenting young adults. This is a very complex topic because of the great variety of these young adults. Before I start, I would like to first acknowledge Glenn Latham, whose 30 plus years of professional experience is included in this course. So who's a young adult? Well, ages 18 to 26 years of age. Uh, they've graduated from high school or they've dropped out. So I'm not talking about a senior, 18 year old senior in high school. Legally, they are adults. They're still growing and maturing. And their brain is still developing until age 26 or so. Now there's an important thing that happens during this period. Uh, the child either learns to be independent or to be helpless and dependent. And we'll talk more about that. Um, in this course, I'm not really talking about children who have severe handicaps because, you know, that's a separate issue. Uh, the kids may have ADD, ADHD. They may be using medical marijuana, uh, but they don't really have any severe handicaps. And I want to suggest, too, that you beware of medical issues such as depression or bipolar. Uh, and seek medical help if your child has these kind of problems. But you may be limited as to what you can do because your child is an adult and any treatment has to be at their choice. So what is the expectation for young adults? What is their job? Well, as a young adult, as an adult, they need to either be independent and self-sufficient or they need to be actively gaining skills to become independent and self-sufficient. And in addition to that, that expectation, uh, you need to expect your child to be responsible for his own actions. You want to kind of go by the store motto, you break it, you buy it. Right? In this case, uh, your child needs to understand you cause it, you pay for it. So that uh, the child is really learning, this is life, I'm responsible for myself, I'm responsible for my own, own actions, not mom and dad. So I want to break these young adults up into four categories as to how well they're doing from the best down to, let's say, the worst. So on the top, we've got the kids where things are really going well, and we'd say they've got their head on straight. And these kids have a career objective, uh, or they have a career already started, they're working hard in college or at a job, and they may be a pain in the butt to deal with, and they may still be at home, but these kids, you know, have the drive and the focus to, to get some things done. The second group is a go with the flow. They don't really know exactly what they want, but they're cooperative. They're going along with things, and they're kind of doing what others seem to be doing and what maybe you as a parent tell them they should be doing. And they'll probably go to college if you tell them. they get a job if you tell them. They're doing these things, but they're not really engaged in it with their heart. They don't really know where they're heading in terms of a career path. And these kids can often flounder along the way. So you want to be aware that uh, these kids who seem to be doing well, because they're saying, okay, they registered, they applied for school, they seem to be doing well, but there's still a risk there. Now, the ones that are adrift, these are the ones that are really not doing well. They may be pleasant to be around. They may be give you a hug, you know, when they come and go. But when it comes to getting a job or getting an education, you have to coax and cajole them. It seems that you're much more interested in them working or going, getting an education than they are. Uh, if they're going to college, they're not doing well in college. Uh, they may have dropped out several semesters, dropped courses, gotten incompletes. And if they're working, then they're typically in not in a stable job and either having uh, low wages or, or part-time work. See, with these kids, it's just they're uncertain regarding education and career, what they should be doing. They may tell you, well, I just need a break. I, I need some time. Well, along the way, you also notice that these kids are generally going to be using uh, drugs or alcohol, especially marijuana. And they may even have kids of their own that you as a parent uh, are needing to help provide care for. 
Now, our bottom group in this I call beyond the rough. This is from the golf analogy. If you have your look at your golf course, you down the middle is the fairway, and on the edges of the fairway is the rough, and then beyond, and the rough is a little higher grass, you know, not as well groomed as the fairway, and beyond the rough, there's no telling what they're gonna find. There's trees and woods and high weeds and creeks and all kinds of, of obstacles and problems. These are the kids that are beyond the rough that have rebelled against you as a parent, against your values. Uh, they're going to strongly resist your influence. They're defiant of your request. They're often angry. They're probably using drugs. They have undesirable friends. They are definitely off track. And once again, they may have children of their own that you're stuck helping provide care for. I'd like to talk uh, about the issue I mentioned before of learned helplessness. From the works of Martin Seligman, uh, we, we have an explanation of this phenomenon. And what it is, is a person learns, or through the, her experiences she comes to believe, that she's powerless to change things. The person stops trying to change things because they believe that they can't. And they tolerate things the way they are. Even if they're unhappy, and even if the present circumstances seem to be very bad, they just live with it. So mentally, there is a disconnect between behavior and payoff, between expending effort and having some result or positive payoff or consequence that the child wants. And they're just kind of hopeless and helpless. Now, Dr. Latham applied this to our young adults in this way. He said uh, that a child learns that the things he wants and needs keep coming regardless of what he does. So if he gets a job, he doesn't get a job, if he doesn't show up, if he loses his job, if he drops out of school, the child keeps getting the things that he needs and wants. Quoting Dr. Latham, he said, between the ages of 18 and 26, children are learning to either be independent or to be helpless. Everyday loss to the acquisition of independence is adding to the learning of helplessness." Close quote. So this is a critical time for our kids for them to learn to be independent and self-sufficient. Another issue that we're going to talk about later in this course is the sense of entitlement. And any of our groups can have this sense of entitlement, especially in this day and age, depends on where, we, where you live. A lot of our young adults feel like the world's supposed to be given to them on a platter. Whatever the family has should be theirs. Uh, they don't really want to work for what they get. It's a conflict between getting it for free versus working and earning it. And we'll talk about this in some detail as to what you can do in our lesson entitled Love, Laughter, and Limits. So other things that we're going to cover in this course? Well, we're going to talk about the science of human behavior and how it applies to young adults. We're going to help you understand why do young adu adults do the things that they do. And we'll have a lesson specifically to try to help you understand why your child does the things that he or she does. We're going to cover parenting and interaction skills for this age group that will help you get along with these kids as adults and have more positive interactions, but also deal with some of the things that make, make them such a pain in the butt. We're going to talk about improving the relationship and maintaining the relationship with the love and laughter, which is really still important in terms of having a positive influence on these kids. We're going to talk about how to improve their motivation and particularly whether it's to succeed in college or to get a job and be independent, we're going to talk about that in a way that's very practical and will help you have a conversation that's very important with your young adult. Now, some of these young adults are at home sponging off a of mom and dad. They're basically squatters. And I'll help you deal with them in a way that may get them moving in the right direction. And some of these young adults, they shouldn't be at home. And if you need to, your child to move out, well, I'll teach you how to do that. And to make that happen, 
in a minimally uh, disruptive and problematic way so that the child can be successful and everybody can get on with progressing in life. So thank you for watching the introduction to the launch, the transition from dependent child to independent adult. I'm Tom Dozier wishing you an abundance of love and laughter in your family, along with limits, which we still need with young adults to help your child make the often difficult transition from dependent child to independent adult. Thank you.